Thank you for that. I didn't, uh, I didn't see that before. Pastor, I brought uh, somebody with me. I don't know. I didn't tell you. A VIP. A friend of mine. Yeah, so I want us to welcome him. Hallelujah. Say, who is my friend? He's the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Ancient of Days. The Almighty God. The one who is. The one who was. The one who is to come. Welcome him in this place. Welcome Jesus. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome God the Father. Welcome him. He's already here. He's here with us. He said where two or three are gathered. There he is in the midst of them. Welcome him. He's here this afternoon. This evening. We are gathered unto him. He's here. Welcome him. Say welcome Lord Jesus. Lover of my soul. Owner of my soul. The one who was. The one who reigns. The El Shaddai. The King of Glory. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. The first and the last. The God Almighty. All powerful. All knowing. Our rock. Our shield. Our defense. Our strong tower. Our hiding place. The God of mercy. The God of mercy. The God of mercy. Welcome him. Welcome him. Father we welcome you. Daddy we welcome you. Our gathering will be a waste of time if you are not here. But we thank you because you are the one that promised your word. You said where two or three are gathered, there you are. We know you are here. I know you are here. Because, Father, I, you came with me. Thank you, Father, for your presence. In your presence is fullness of joy. Thank you because in your presence there is healing, there is mercy, there is deliverance. In your mercy, O oh Lord, yokes are broken. The captives are set free. We thank you, Father, because, oh Lord, when you show up, oh God, the devil cannot stand there. We thank you because your presence fills this place. And in the sanctuary, God is here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Daddy, we thank you because the heavens are open. Thank you because angels are descending and ascending. Thank you because mercy will speak for somebody this evening. Mercy will speak over that situation. Mercy will speak over that child. Mercy will speak over that issue. In the name of Jesus, the mercy of God will speak for you. In the name of Jesus, you will not live the same. These three days, you will not live the same. By the end of this conference, mercy will have delivered for you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God of mercy. Thank you, God of mercy. Thank you, God of mercy. We worship you this evening. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody who is excited that God is here. Praise the Lord. If you know that God is here for you, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we, you can have your seat. God bless you. Can I have this uh, thing up a bit? <laughs> hallelujah. Please, can you help me? Can someone help me? Oh, ble- ah, it's not that heavy. I thought it was heavy. Hallelujah. Thank God for God is able. God is indeed able. He has been faithful. He has been merciful. Uh, I think this is how many years now? 18 years of God is able. Is somebody excited? I saw, you see, 18 is, uh, when you are 18, you are an adult. Amen? So when you are 18, it means you are an adult. You are responsible now. So I believe that God, God is able has got into another level of maturity in Christ. And I thank God for his consistency for the past 18 years. I celebrate my friend here, my brother. He's not even my friend, he's my brother. My brother indeed, my brother in love, my brother in Christ. And his dear wife. The funny thing was that I knew his wife first. Amen? Before I met him. My wife was a friend to uh, Pastor Kola. So when I, Pastor Kola came, I now took over Pastor Kola from him. Is that not so? And that's how our friendship we swapped. Hallelujah. I thank God for your life. Thank God for day one yesterday. Thank God for Pastor Tutu Akimbe. Can we just celebrate them? Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. I thank God for day one yesterday. The ground was prepared by uh, Apostle. Hallelujah. How many were here yesterday? Were you blessed? 
he, he did something for us yesterday. He cleared the ground for us. He set fire to all the all the jamacha, all the weeds, so that it can be easy for us to to continue. We thank God for His life. We bless God for what uh, the Lord used Him to do yesterday. And I pray for somebody that that thing which God has done yesterday in your life shall remain permanent in Jesus' name. I say it shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Today we will attempt to now plant because we have to sow the seed. The entrance of the word of God. He says it gives light and understanding to the simple. After yesterday, everything has been cleared. You need the word. And I believe tomorrow Pastor Kola will now lay another uh, building on that, on the word. And uh, on Saturday, on Sunday, by the grace of God, our mother will come and finish the building. Hallelujah. And by that time, you will have been solid and settled and received mercy in Jesus' name. The mercy of God will speak for you. One of the things I want to encourage us with, number one, as, as, as um, believers, and I believe you are disciples. Because at this level, one of the things, when pastor called me and said, uh, you are, he told me, he said, you are preaching. I said, ah, my heart sank. Because I, I don't like preaching to the converted. I like preaching to the unconverted. My, my ministry is mission-based. Hallelujah. It's mission-based to those who have not heard. Because those who have heard, they are meant also to become missionaries. You are meant to be developed at a point where you are able to now sow the word. Because those who are converted, they hear the word and they, they take it for granted. Hallelujah. They've had it before anyway. So it's nothing new. But I pray the Lord will open your ears this evening and you will hear in a different way in the name of Jesus. You will hear something new. You will hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus. So one of the things God was sharing with me as I sat down there, number one in Genesis chapter one, was that God is a God of order. God is a God of order. The first thing he did in Genesis chapter one was it began with order. Let there be light. Light represents illumination, understanding, clarity. And then it set everything in order. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you as a church because this is my also, it's also my church and I'll speak to you as I believe the Lord wants me to, you to hear that order is very important. I will share a testimony with you, one of my very close pastor friends. Well, not, not close, I, you know, I met him once or twice and he shared a testimony that uh, during COVID one of their members caught COVID and the, uh, the pastor, both of them were pastor but the wife caught COVID and she was at the point of death in this uh, Manchester and uh, when she was in the bed she got to the point where she had an encounter with Jesus Christ Jesus came to the bed bedside and he began to tell her certain things about her life some things that the Lord said you know are not really you know in order and he said one thing to her he said one of the things you do is you normally go to church very late you and your husband you always go to church very late and that thing scared her. True story. And she quickly called her husband and told the husband the testimony. With this, my pastor friend, they went to the hospital and saw her. And she told the husband that you may think it's trivial, but you don't, you don't stand God up. One of the things I've understood in my joint ministry journey is that I don't stand. When God says 10 o'clock, I, I believe personally is already waiting there for me. That is me. I'm talking about mercy, but let's understand the context of mercy. So, God, Jesus told her, why should I let you into heaven? Because these are the things, you dishonor me when you say, by 10 we start in service, and you stroll in at 10.30 or whatever time you want. So you dishonor me. You dare not stand up your boss. Hallelujah. You don't do that. So, in the house of God, there must be order. We want to set things in order. You must understand that it is not a joking matter. When, when we say we start service at 7, I believe you should be here as even workers earlier. Hallelujah. It is important. God said I should share that with you. And I pray that if you have been guilty of that, you will repent in Jesus' name. And mercy will speak for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We believe, Father, Lord, you love us so much. That, Lord, if not for your mercy, O oh God, none of us, O oh God, will st stand up in measure to you. Thank you for your mercy. 
Your mercy, O oh Lord, is what has kept us for the past 10 months of this year. Some of us, we could have become history, but your mercy spoke for us. This evening, I pray, O oh God, once again, let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus. For that one, O oh God, who needs, O oh God, your intervention. Father, intervene by mercy in the name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. One of the divine manifestation of mercy is divine preservation. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because what? His compassion fail not. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. The only reason that you and I are not consumed is not because of our prayer. It's not because of whatever you think you do. It's simply because of the mercy of God. And he said that mercy is renewed every morning. So every time God wakes you up, he has renewed his mercy to you. Hallelujah. So every time you wake up in the morning, say thank you, Lord, because God has renewed his mercy to you. There's a song, I mean, when they, when they eulogize God in Yoruba, they say, Ojiko Lukokpa. He wakes one up and he kills one. He wakes one up. It is God who gives, who kills and make it alive. Understand that when you wake up every morning, it is because of the mercies of God. I was looking at the book of Job and I understood that Job was preserved by mercy. Not because of his prayers. I mean, Job prayed every day, but it was not his prayer that kept him. He might have thought his prayers kept him, but I beg to differ. Satan came to God and said, does Job fear God for nothing? And he said, I see something around Job that Job does not see. And the only thing that does, that does not allow me to kill Job is because of the edge. The edge of God's protection. It was not his prayer. So remove the edge and let him pray any kind of prayer. I will kill him. Remove that edge and I will kill Job. And God said, okay, I will remove the edge, but don't touch Job. You can kill everything, but don't touch Job. So how come that Job prayed after the edge removed, was removed, nothing happened. Because why? It was the edge. Until the edge was removed, Satan was not able to touch him. Satan is not afraid of your prayers. Though. Hello? Satan is not afraid of your... You can shout all you want. If the mercy of God is not surrounding you, your prayer cannot save you. Amen? It's mercy. Is your advantage. Every time you pray, remember it is the mercy of God that is keeping me. It's the mercy of God that kept Job. Satan is not afraid of your prayer. He's afraid of who is backing you. Who is backing you is the question I want to ask you. Who is the one backing you? When you go to pray, who is backing you? Satan is not looking at you. He's looking at who is behind you you mercy 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 after job suffered what he suffered somebody may say where is the mercy in the life of i saw mercy even through what he was going through there was evidence of god's mercy somebody may look at job and say household enemies are finally gotten job but job was still preserved by mercy I'm here to tell somebody, whatever you are going through, the fact that you are still alive, it means God's mercy is still working for you. Hallelujah. Job went through what he was going through, but mercy still kept him. Mercy will keep you through the problem of life. Mercy will uphold you in the problem of life. What killed others will not kill you is because of mercy. 
The same thing that made people lose their mind. The same thing you are going through. Somebody lost their mind. Your mind is still intact. It's messy. My wife told me something. You know, she's a mental health nurse. And she said when she was in the ward, working in a mental health uh, hospital, she saw this woman. And all she was crying was, in the hospital was, Baba Wale, Baba Wale. I said, what's happened? Who is Baba Wale? And she got to know that the woman was married. Marriage turned her head. Maybe the husband is marriage turned her head. What she went through marriage just completely she lost her mind. Some of you, you are going through marital. <laughs> hey, the thing God has brought you from. He says you will go through the water, it will not swallow you. You will go through the fire, the fire will not burn you. Why? Because of mercy. Hallelujah. How many people are grateful? That in spite of what the devil threw at you in the past 10 months, you are still standing. How many people are grateful? How many are grateful? How many are grateful that in the past 10 months, the thing you went through did not kill you? The thing you, know you went through did not make you lose your mind? How many are grateful that you, your kidney is still functioning? Your eyes can see. Your legs can still walk. You are still able to eat by yourself. They are not to feeding you. It is mercy. It is the mercy of God. It is the mercy of God. Some people cannot carry their hand. They can't wash themselves. They have to carry them to the toilet. How many people are grateful that mercy has kept you? It is mercy. It is the mercy of God. Go ahead and thank the Lord for the mercy. Ten months of God's mercy. Ten months of God's faithfulness. Every morning he came to wake you up. Thank God. You are not in the hospital. You are not on the bed of sorrow. You are not on the bed of affliction. You are not in the best of hospitals. Your leg can still walk. What killed others did not kill you. The food you ate, some people ate it, it went the wrong way. Some people drank the water you drank, it went the wrong way. Some people just slipped and they fell and that was it. You are here because of the mercy of God. Worship him. Say, Father, I thank you for your mercy. Mercy spoke for you. Mercy showed up for you. Mercy is showing up for you. Appreciate him for his mercy. His mercies are new every morning over your children, over your family, over your loved ones, over your marriage, over your job, in your health, in your mind. You have not lost your mind. You have not lost your senses. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Give him glory. He alone is worthy. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Mercy kept us. Mercy kept us. Mercy kept us. His mercy is keeping you. His mercy is preserving you. Thank you, Daddy. Glory be to your name for your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. You can have your say, God bless you. It's good to thank God for mercy. Hallelujah. Most of the time, we are busy complaining and asking God for God, do this. Good. But the one God has done for you, are you have you thanked him? Because when you thank him for that, what he, what he has done, he opens the heavens. Mercy is something that attracts God. Mercy is, is something you do every morning. The moment you wake up, open your eyes, just say, God, I thank you for your mercy. The first thing, Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. Everything about how we relate with God is based on mercy. Your prayer, your worship, is, is based on mercy. Hallelujah. It's based on mercy. Your salvation, your healing, is based on mercy. Everything that has to do with how you relate with God is based on mercy. I want to touch on seven points on what mercy actually looks like. I thank God for the uh, pastor that prayed earlier. He shared the scripture. He said, yeah, all Jesus began to teach and do. And I'm a teacher of the word. Hallelujah. Thank God for Apostle Asa. He bulldozed everything. He bulldozed. He removed that. We can pray, I can pray, but then there's a place for the word where you plant the seed of the word. So I'm going to break the word down. As, as the word is coming, I pray the word will begin to manifest in your life. It says he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. It is the word that does everything. So the mercy of God, what does it look like? Number one, mercy is a destination. Mercy is a destination. John 16 verse 33. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world mercy doesn't exclude you from troubles the fact that you are going through troubles doesn't mean that god does not have mercy on you or that you're not enjoying god's mercy jesus said even in this world you may be going through trouble but don't be don't worry i am with you i am still there with you i am holding your hand you have backing it's same when you go through anything in life don't say god where are you i am there with you i have overcome the wall what's happening to this mic is no they, they, they are twisting they are changing my tone <laughs> So, anytime you are going through a problem, please don't say, God is not having mercy on you. Say, Father, I thank you for your mercy. Through it all, you must learn to lean on Jesus. Ahead. Thank you. Lean on him. Lean on his mercy. Whatever you are going through, please don't, don't speak the language of the devil. Speak mercy. Thank you, God, for your mercy. I don't know what is happening, Lord, but I thank you for your mercy. Even through, Father, Lord, if I, I thank you for your mercy. You must learn to speak the language that heaven that will attract heaven. Job never sinned in everything that he went through. He never sinned. Everything that happened, Job, he says, to God be the glory. It is God that gave it. He thanked God. Mercy will preserve you. Mercy is a destination. Mercy is a journey. Mercy will preserve you. Mercy will hold you. David was an example of mercy. The moment he was anointed as king, trouble began. But in his trouble, God showed up for him. Because he was going somewhere. You are going somewhere. I say you are going somewhere. I say you are going somewhere. Don't be discouraged. You are going somewhere. God is taking you somewhere. And part of the journey will involve, sometimes it will stretch you. It will challenge you. It will push you. It will wake you up. It will pinch you. But he will never leave you alone. He's developing your character. Developing your faith. Strengthening your muscle. I don't know what you are currently going through. But I declare to you by the mercy of God. You will come out victorious in the name of Jesus. You will come out victorious in the name of Jesus. The songwriter says, No matter what comes my way, Lord, my life is in your hand. Number two. Mercy is selective somebody is playing with this mic okay they are not playing with this okay praise the lord that's better thank you mercy is selective romans chapter 9 verse 15 to 16 god told moses i will have mercy on whomever i will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. We're talking about mercy this evening. So mercy is selective. It is of God who shows mercy. In all your running, in all your effort, in all your whatever, remember, God is the one that shows mercy mercy and this kind of mercy you can't pray for it because it is a sovereign decision of god you can't pray for this kind of mercy god select me no <laughs> god it is me who select me he won't select you it qualifies those who are not qualified this mercy works that way i didn't plan to be a pastor the last person on earth that will be a pastor is me i don't like talking i don't like you know, but God qualifies that is selection. He, he qualifies those who don't even want it. That is selective mercy. So don't beg God for something that you think you, you know, God will qualify you. He qualifies those who are not qualified. So this kind of mercy is select. It is based on God's sovereign decision. And it is for a purpose. Romans 9, 11 to 13 says, For the children not yet been born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. 
But regardless of whether God, whether you feel you are chosen or not, I have good news for you. You are already chosen. No? Why? You are already chosen. First Peter chapter 9, chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That you may do what? You may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Say, I am chosen. Say, I am chosen. Say, I am chosen. I am a special person, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. You are chosen. So, regardless of the fact that, you know, we say it's selective, as long as you are in Christ, you are chosen. You are chosen for what? For a purpose. To do what? To declare his marvelous work. God has chosen you out of darkness into light by mercy. Mercy alone has chosen you. Number three, mercy has a set time. Mercy has a set time. Psalm 102 verse 13 says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. I don't know about you, but I believe my set time has come. I believe my set time for mercy has come. You don't sound like it. <laughs> Why? Because God will arise. He says, when God arises, it means a set time has come. And I believe this God is able conference because it's 18 year. God is arising for somebody. And your set time of favor, of mercy, will manifest in Jesus' name. Mercy has the voice. Mercy can speak. Matthew 11, verse 28. It says, come to me, all you will labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That is the voice of mercy. Mercy by invitation. God is calling you this evening. God is saying, come to me. I know you carry so many burdens, so many problems, so many issues. Say, come to me with that and I will show you mercy. I will show you mercy and give you. I pray God will give you rest. In the name of Jesus, rest within, rest without, rest in your mind, rest in your home, rest over that child, rest in that marriage, rest over your health, rest over your future. In the name of Jesus. Say, we'll give you rest. It is God who is saying, I will give you rest. The rest of God is what God is calling us to do. And this God is mercy. God is a able convention. God is calling you. I pray you will respond to his voice. In the name of Jesus. Number five, you can reap mercy. Mercy can be reaped. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. It says, sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Do the right thing. And you will reap mercy. See, some of the prayers we are praying is not necessary. Some of the prayers we pray and like Pastor said now, you know, the, the problem is not the prayer. The prayer is very good. It, 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 it fires you up. But you must be able to sustain the prayer. Sustain the momentum. And how do you do that? The moment you live here, it's common. People just, they, they, it, it's not that. How to sustain this momentum is the secret of mercy. Say, sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Sow for yourself. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. And mercy will follow you. David says, surely, goodness, mercy follows. Why? Because David was doing the right thing. He was a man after the heart of God. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Do the right thing. Mercy will follow you. Mercy will locate you. Mercy will lift you. Hallelujah. So you can reap mercy. Mercy is something that can be reaped by doing the right thing. Every time by God. Number six, your salvation is by mercy. Titus 3, chapter 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration. Renewing of So God's salvation is by mercy. There was nothing we did to be saved. So mercy is 
by salvation. Salvation is by mercy. Number seven, mercy is a covenant. Mercy is what? It's a covenant. Isaiah 55 verse 3 says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Some, some, some children are reaping the mercies that their parents sow. Some children are under the covering of mercy of generational what their forefathers did. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that what you do now has impact on your children to the third and fourth generation. Hallelujah. Whatever your parents did that is affecting you, you can change it. You can start to change it by keying to the covenant of mercy. Say, this will stop with me. The evil flow, whatever it is that troubled them, will not flow to my children. You can imagine somebody like the Daddy Gio, that the, what he has done for his unborn generation, it will la- they don't need to do anything. Those children, they will just enjoy mercy. Why? Because their father paid the price in the place of sacrifice. Covenant of mercy. You must make up your mind for the sake of your children and your unborn children that Lord, I, 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 I will enter this covenant with you. Covenant of mercy that your children will be enjoying things they've not even prayed for. Hallelujah. Most of us, we are struggling under the yoke of our forebears. Whatever covenant they have entered into, whatever thing they've done wrong, we, have, we struggled until we found Jesus. Tonight, that thing is changing. Tonight, it is changing. In the name of Jesus, that covenant is breaking. And you enter a new covenant. But to sustain that covenant, you must always sow mercy, righteousness, and reap in mercy. God says, I made an everlasting covenant with David. It is sure with David. God says, he says, that mercy, I don't know what can remove it all. He says, I removed the mercy from Saul. But with David, I am trying to understand why would, how come David enjoyed that kind of mercy? He understood the heart of God. Bible says he understood. You see, as believers, we, we, we don't spend time to understand the God we are serving. We don't know the God we are serving intimately. That's the problem. We serve the God like pastor, the pastor, the, the, the God that we heard about. But David understood God in the secret place. He understood God. He knew God. He was a man that understood the heart of God. For you to walk with God, it must be in the secret place. The secret place is where you discover God. When you begin to understand God in that place of the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. You begin to see miracles, things you don't even pray for, things you don't ask for, God will deliver for you. But you must spend time in the secret place. That is the price of mercy. The kind of mercy you don't need to pray for, you can get it in the secret place. And it costs time. And in this environment we are living in, most of us, God will help us. I say, God will help us. I say, God will help us. I say God will help us who God will deliver us. You know, most people they come from Nigeria, they, they jack back from Nigeria on fire. By the time they spend a couple of years here, the fire will have will have turned to ice block. Why? Jama jama. You have to jama in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. But God will you see in the midst of that, you must find time to spend with God. Hallelujah. We must find time to spend with God because mercy also has a secret. To enjoy the mercy that David enjoyed, it will involve you separating to God. Hallelujah. Mercy is activated through intimacy. It's intimacy that activates mercy. It is intimacy, please listen to me. It is intimacy that activates mercy. When you are intimate with God in the place of quietness, not just prayer, no, don't just pray, pray, pray. Please settle with God. Understand His heart through His word. Let God unveil Himself to you. Hallelujah. Take time off work once a while, maybe two or three days. There's a, you can go to retreats by yourself. 
I'm telling you the secret. Go to a, a secret place. And just, only you and God. Do it regularly. And you begin to see results in your life. Result that mercy can... Or result of mercy. It is a sacrifice, but it is worth it. You can be repositioned for mercy. And the ways that God can position you for mercy in several ways. The way you can be in the position to receive God's mercy. Number one, having the fear of God. Fearing God. Obeying his commandment. Loving him. Exodus chapter 20 verse 6. Luke 1 50. Psalm 103 verse 17 to 18. Having the fear of God. If you fear God, you would not come to church late. One of the things that will show that you fear God is you respect God. It's time. You see, I said God is here. I have the consciousness of God every time I'm, in, I'm, I'm with God. I practice the consciousness of me and God. And I'm telling you, God is in this house. Why? Yesterday, as we were worshiping God, I felt his presence. Because why? I've, I've learned to practice the consciousness of God with me. And that will keep you from sinning against God. David said, I have hidden your word in my heart, so I will not sin against you. If you have that consciousness that God is with you, you will not, even in the secret place where nobody sees you. He said, God is seeing me. And you won't sin against God. Practice that consciousness of God being with you. God by your side. God at your left. God at your right. Hallelujah. So, you must have the fear of God. You must learn to show mercy to others. Luke chapter 6 verse 35. I'm talking about positioning for God's mercy. The fear of God. Learn to show mercy to others. Number three. In order to also obtain mercy from God, you must learn to forgive and forget the wrong done to you. You must learn to forgive. Matthew 18, 25 to 27. You must learn to forgive. Number four, in order to be positioned for mercy, you must confess and forsake your sins. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Psalm 51 verse 1. You must confess and forsake your sins. If you don't do that, mercy may not be easily available. Yesterday, Apostle talked about in order to, be, to receive mercy, you must be humble. Humility. God resists the proud. But it gives grace to the humble. You know, if God resists somebody, there's no prayer they can pray. Nobody can pray for you that God will answer. Because it is God that is resisting the person. Can you imagine God resisting somebody and the person still shouting and still praying and still fasting? What's he doing? Is he not wasting his time? God resists the proud. And pride can manifest in many ways. You can even say, I'm humble and be proud. Have you seen humble people who are proud? Have you not seen them before? Humble, say, I'm very humble. But their heart is standing like this. Pastor, good afternoon, sir. But their heart is standing up. God resists the proud. God deals with the inner man. He doesn't deal with the outside man. So I look at the heart and I, and I give to man according to his ways. God gives us according to our heart. God deals with your heart, not with what every man says. Man sees the outside, God sees the inside. Ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart. Lord, am I proud? I don't even know. You may not know that you're even proud. The Holy Ghost can search you and say you are proud in this area. And you begin to repent and say, God, because if you don't do that, God is resisting. Then you must trust God. Trust the Lord. Positioning for God's mercy, trust God. Humility. Humility of heart. Be humble. Humility, it doesn't mean that you are, you are wearing a as you oh no 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 it's not your dressing it's your heart hallelujah we are talking about the advantage of mercy but in order to fully appreciate the mercy of god you must first of all know the terror of god second corinthians 5 11 knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men if you know god if you know this God that we are talking about, 
we won't hear. Hebrews 12, 29 says, For our God is a consuming. I thank God I'm not living in the Old Testament era. I, 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 I thank God every day I wasn't born then because God would have killed me ten times over. Can you imagine somebody like Uza? The ark was about to fall and he was doing God a favor and God killed him. That God has not changed though. You only enjoy mercy. We are telling you. We are telling you. This God you are dealing with is a consuming fire. He has two sides. But this, this dispensation is of grace and mercy and that's why everything is done anyhow. But it's still the same God. It does not change. Our God is a consuming fire. And that day is still coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. It says judgment will begin in the house of God. It will begin like the days of Ananias and Sapphira. I can't wait for that day where liars will come say, Pastor, I donated this thing. And God say, Ah, you are a liar. And they will strike you down. And the best thing will die. That is the God we are serving. When we talk about the mercy of God, understand, if you understand this terror, if you understand the, the kind of God you deal with, then you appreciate his mercy more. Say, Lord, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that, Lord, your mercy has not, cons- have not been consumed simply by your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Zechariah chapter 1. Talk about the story of Joshua the high priest. And in this, you know, I thank God that mercy of God is what did not allow Joshua the high priest. Satan was accusing him. And, and the voice of mercy says, no, cancel the judgment. Even though he was guilty, he says, mercy spoke. For. I pray for somebody this evening that even though you are guilty in that thing, and the devil is accusing you. Mercy will speak for you. In the name of Jesus. Mercy will cancel every judgment. Against your life in the name of Jesus. Any altar. Every altar. Every coven. Wherever the enemy has sat in judgment against you. Mercy will speak for you. Mercy will say no. Mercy will say no. In the name of Jesus. Mercy will speak for somebody. Mercy will speak for you. For your family. For your children. For their tomorrow. Mercy will speak in the name of Jesus. You know the devil understands he understand the legality of, uh, of everything. You understand how they can go to any, any judgment seat. He can go to any coven. Anywhere that the devil, you know, uh, the path of darkness sits. And they can bring any, anybody's case before God. So when you are praying, always ask for mercy. Because in that thing you may be guilty. But mercy is what will silence every voice. I pray once again for somebody. That the mercy of God will silence every voice accusing you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you shall condemn every tongue that is accusing you. Why? Because of mercy. Mercy in the blood. Mercy by the blood. Mercy by Calvary. Every voice of accusation against you, against your family, shall be silenced today in the name of Jesus. We condemn them in the name of Jesus. Say you will condemn them. Every tongue that shall rise against your children, against your marriage, against your destiny, against your health, against your ministry, against your future, against your today, against your tomorrow, every voice of accusation we condemn in the name of Jesus. We condemn in the name of Jesus. Every voice that is speaking from your origin, from your foundation, from your roots, from your father's house, your mother's house, your past, 
every voice of accusation shall be condemned by mercy in the name of Jesus. There are voices that speak, but there's a higher voice. It is called the voice of mercy. Can we rise upon our feet as we pray? This evening, the Lord said he will not remove his mercy from David as he did with Saul. You want to ask God, Father, please don't let me do anything that will I'll cause you to remove your mercy from me in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, don't let me do anything that will cause you to remove your mercy from my life, from my family, from my children. As you did with Saul, in the name of God, I begin to pray that prayer. Say, Father, don't let me do anything that will cause you to remove your mercy from me and from my family. In the name of Jesus, Father, don't let me do anything, anything that I will do that will cause you, Lord, to remove your mercy. Don't let me do it. Lord, don't let me do it. Don't let my children do it. Don't let my husband do it. Don't let my wife do it. Anything, oh God, that we will do that will cause you, Lord, to remove your mercy from our life. Father, don't let us do it. Don't let us do it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies. They, uh, so, uh, Sol Solomon was dwelling in his house and God of mercy gave him rest. Why? The covenant of mercy with David. God gave him rest. God gave Solomon rest. Because of what? Because of mercy. You will cry to God. Say, Father, say, Father, please give me rest from every enemy of my soul enemy within enemy without enemy in my father's house in my mother father give us rest oh lord in the name of you cry to god say by the covenant of mercy give me rest give me rest oh god from every enemy enemy within enemy without enemy oh lord in our father's house mother's house give us rest give me rest give my children rest give me rest oh god rest oh god all round rest rest in my spirit rest in my soul rest in my body rest in my mind rest in my marriage rest in my finances rest over those children ask god to give you rest give them rest give me rest give me rest oh god in every area in the name of jesus thank you our father glory be to your name forever in jesus name we pray psalm 126 verse 5 says those who sow in tears shall reap i don't know for how long you have been sowing in tears but the god who is able who said mercy is my advantage for you you will reap in joy in jesus name say father father of mercy in every area that i have sown in tears before the end of this year let me begin to reap in joy in the name of jesus cry to god in every area that I have sown in tears for the past 10 months, oh God, by the advantage of mercy, let me begin to reap in joy. In the name of Jesus, let me begin to reap in joy. God of mercy, in every area, in any area that I have sown, oh God, in tears, let me begin to reap, oh God, in joy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Father of mercy, by your mercy, terminate every evil journey that the enemy has planned for me in the remaining days of this year. In the name of Jesus, say, by your mercy, O God, terminate every evil journey the enemy has planned, the enemy has programmed, the enemy has designed for me and my family in the remaining days of this year. Terminate them by mercy. Terminate them by mercy. Every evil journey, satanic journey, journey of no return, journey of sickness, journey of sorrow. The enemy has programmed. The enemy has planned for me and my family in the remaining days of this year. Father, by mercy, cancel them. Cancel them. Terminate them 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 42 verse 10 says, My enemies, don't you reproach me. Sorry, it says, My enemies reproach me. Sorry. My enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long, Where is your God? Where is this God you have been crying to every time? Where is this God? Where is this God? Say, Father, by your mercy, silence every voice. Ask him, where is my God? Silence them today. Silence them tonight. Every voice. Ask him, where is his God? Father, silence them by mercy. In the name of Jesus. Every satanic voice. Every demonic voice. Every voice of shame. Every voice of reproach. Ask him, where is the God is serving? Father, silence them. Give me a miracle. Give us a testimony. By the end of this conference, let our testimony be evident. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name forever. Jesus' name we pray. We are praying two more prayers and then we are going to the communion service. Mercy can locate you. Mercy is the senior brother of favor. When mercy comes, favor comes. Goodness comes. When mercy opens to you, favor and goodness follows you everywhere you go. Mercy is the person. Mercy is Jesus. Mercy is Christ. Mercy is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. When mercy dwells with you, struggle ends. Failure ends. Situation that has not changed before will begin to shift. You want to say, Father. Say, Father of mercy. This is my foundation. By your mercy, destroy every evil plantation. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father of mercy. By your mercy, O God. This is my foundation. Whatever you have not planted there, that cannot be traced to you, Father, uproot them. Uproot them tonight. By mercy. Let the hand of mercy uproot every evil plantation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your name forevermore. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed in jesus mighty name we have prayed i said in jesus mighty name we have prayed i pray for you every age old problem that has not answered to prayer or fasting or sowing or whatever you have done i pray tonight for you that those problems will answer to god's mercy in the name of jesus mercy will deliver you Mercy will set you free. Mercy will lift you up. From every mighty clay of life, mercy will pull you out. From darkness, from sickness, mercy will pull you out. In the name of Jesus. Like blind Bartimaeus cried. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I pray tonight for as many who can cry to God. That prayer of Jesus, have mercy on me. I pray God will answer you by fire in the name of Jesus. He will answer you by fire in the name of Jesus. He will answer you speedily in the name of Jesus. Mercy will answer you. Mercy will speak for you. You will have testimonies. You will come back testifying. You will come back rejoicing. You will come back with your evidence. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Go ahead and appreciate the Lord. For if you know you have truly obtained mercy, Say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for that mercy. Thank you for that mercy. Thank you for that mercy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to the communion quickly and seal what we believe God has done tonight with communion. The communion meal is very powerful. And like we heard yesterday, you can't eat it anyhow. And for you to eat it, you must be in the family of God. So you must be born again. You must have surrendered your life to Jesus. Says anybody that eats this meal in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood of, of the body of Jesus. Hallelujah. So where you are, with every head bowed, with every eyes closed, the invitation is still open. It's the invitation of mercy. When I gave my life to Christ, July 1988. 
I remember it like yesterday. I had an encounter that changed everything about me. My life changed. My hunger for God was on fire. The second day. Remember like yesterday at Yewande Memorial School in Surulere, Christ Chapel, Dr. Tunde Joda. I went with a girlfriend. I was not even born again then. I, I didn't go to, I, I just went to see, let's just go. And God arrested me immediately. I began to speak in tongues this, this very same day. The next day, I was looking for witches and wizards in, in my area. I was looking for, them. where are they? Where are the witches? Where are the wizards? Let me deal with them. If your salvation experience, you didn't experience a change, I doubt if you are truly born again. So everything must change. If you give your life to Christ genuinely, the old will go. The new, God will give you new desires. So if you are here this evening and you are not even sure that your salvation was genuine, the voice of mercy is inviting you. With every head bowed, every eyes closed, where you are, just lift up your hands. I will pray with you. I will agree with you. The Lord will touch you. He will remove every desire that is not from him and will give you a new desire. And your, and your salvation will be genuine. You will know that if you die today, you will go to heaven. But eventually you are backsliding. You, you backslid. The things you used to do, you are doing them again. Talk to the Lord. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Cleanse me, O God. Wash me, O God, in the blood of your Son. Have mercy on me, O God. Daddy, the things that I said I would not do, I'm doing them again. Father, have mercy. Ask God to have mercy. Before you eat this meal, make it right with God. Mercy can only be activated in righteousness. Say, Father, I call upon you this evening. In every way I've failed you. In every way, I've, Father, Lord, I've put your son to shame again. Please, Lord, let mercy speak for me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Purify me. Sanctify me. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, let's quickly share the uh, communion meal elements. Let's share the elements. Attitude of prayer. I want you to understand that we are partaking of the body of Christ. The body of Jesus. His body that was given to us. The body that he, he gave up for us so that we can have life. Thank you. Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. He says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last days. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. And I in him forever. Thank the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you for your body. Thank you for your body which you gave, Father, Lord, for me. Thank you for your body which is life. I thank you for this element which, O oh Lord, I believe, O oh God, has the life of Christ. Thank the Lord, say, Father, as I partake of this table tonight, whatever is not of you that cannot be traced to you in my body, as I partake of this bread, let it be swallowed. Sickness, affliction, pain, sorrow, depression, whatever it is, say, Father, tonight as I partake of your body, Lord, let it be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I know your body was broken for me. So that I may have wholeness. Ask God, Father, tonight, as Lord, I break this bread. Whatever is broken in my life, visions, dream, health, restore them, O God. Let it be made whole. Let it be made whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
in Jesus mighty name we pray for I received from the Lord that which I also did deliver to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it break the bread he says take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of him go ahead and eat the body In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink this club, cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Hold on, don't drink yet. I want you to lift up the cup to the Lord. Say, Father, thank you for your blood that you shed for me. Thank you for your blood that speaks better things than the blood of bulls and the blood of rams and the blood of Abel. Thank you for your blood that is the blood of the new covenant. As I drink, O oh God, your blood tonight, anything that is not of God in my body system, let it be flushed out. Every disease, every affliction, every infirmity, every sorrow, every weakness, every curse, every covenant, let it be flushed out by this new covenant oh lord i renew covenant tonight by this blood every evil covenant every old covenant by this blood is swallowed tonight thank you father for your blood i renew this covenant in the name of god the father god the son god the holy spirit in the name of jesus go ahead and drink Go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Go ahead and begin to bless and say, Father, I thank you. You have renewed covenant once again. Covenant of life. Covenant of living. No death. No sorrow. Divine exemption from affliction. You have been immune by this covenant. And I begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank you. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this covenant. Covenant, O oh Lord, of deliverance. Covenant that speaks covenant of mercy lord i thank you lord i thank you blessed be your name forever you look beyond me oh you look beyond me oh hallelujah i'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you look beyond me I'm the one, oh, I'm the one that you.